Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Ali Moreno, Craig Burley and Stevie Nickel. Gab Marcotti will be here in a moment. Only one place to start today's show, and that's in Turin. Remember, Atleti were 2-0 up, but a Cristiano Ronaldo hat-trick gave Juventus a 3-2 win over the two legs to see them through to the quarterfinals. Atleti out. And we were talking about this a lot yesterday when we were talking about how it could be a tight game, how Atleti could be difficult to break down. Juve did that and then some. Yeah, it was either going to be the great night in Turin that we talked about and a fantastic performance or, or a boring game that they saw out. And, you know, it was crystal clear what Juventus needed to do and that was got off to a good start. They did, not only in terms of the goal that was chopped off, but the way they played. Uh, and... The disappointing thing from an Athletic Madrid point of view is they were hopeless. Yeah. Mm. When they were yeah, asked they the were. question, they were all over the place. And defensively, they were they were all over the place. They got the run around in midfield. Bernadeschi's performance was unbelievable from early on. And Ronaldo got the headlines for the hat trick. But once they got the crowd behind them, once Ronaldo's the first header goes in, they could just smell that they were going to keep pushing and keep pushing. Uh, and I, you know, I never felt at any point during that game that they weren't going to create more chances in the game. I just. You know, I never felt that was going to happen. Stevie, you, like pretty much everyone, with the exception of Craig, thought that Atleti would be yep. the team that would make it through. Where did it go wrong? Where did it go right for you, then? It went wrong exactly where I thought it would go right. <laughs> Defensively. Yeah. You know, we, we know that Godin and Jimenez would love to stand all day and head balls out, balls that were thrown in, but I didn't expect as many. You know, at the end of the day, you have to stop the cross. You can't do it all the time, but you have to stop the cross. And when you've got a guy in Ronaldo who arguably, well, not arguably, is, he, he reads a cross better than anybody else. I don't care whether you're centre back six foot five or five foot ten. Yeah. Ronaldo understands the delivery and always gets himself there first. He hangs in the air. I mean, is there anybody better in the air in the penalty box? I don't think there is. So... The first thing you have to do is stop the ball coming in, and they didn't do that. Uh, you mentioned Ronaldo. Pretty much that'll be the rest of the show now. Uh, let's start <laughs> by what he had to say after the game. Uh, this is why Juve brought me in to help on magic nights like this. And if you take a look at his uh, Champions League record, it's quite sensational. In that, his first seven matches with Juventus produced one goal tonight when he really needed to step up it produced three goals. He loves scoring against Atleti. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> 33 games, 25 goals, four of them hat-tricks. The last two have been in the Champions League knockout stages. So it's a career's worth of goal just against Atletico Madrid. And there was pressure on Juventus, of course, but there was even more pressure on Ronaldo yeah. coming into this match. When we were previewing this matchup, Atletico Madrid and Juventus, the tiebreaker, the thing that was going to put Juventus over the top was Cristiano Ronaldo. And when you lose 2 nothing away from home and then you do the things that you did in the mix zone and you flash the number five and, yep. and all those things attracts all sorts of attention that any other player around the world, may you may suggest, why do you want that attention? Why do you want that pressure? Well, for Cristiano Ronaldo, the truth of the matter is that he thrives on that pressure. He thrives on that stage. And nobody loves to be more on that spotlight than Cristiano Ronaldo. What you saw from him today, I don't think we're surprised. And yet, it continues to be special because it's three goals against Atletico Madrid. Sure. This hat trick is, is the moment, is the expectation, is the weight of those expectations, is what might have been if you didn't come through. And yet, he doesn't care about any of that. He doesn't care about any other anybody else's opinions. He cares about what his performance looks like on the on the field. And tonight, once again, it was special. Next level from Cristiano Ronaldo. He was clutch. I know Godin and, him, and Jimenez, back, and Stevie mentioned it, they, they back themselves to, to win crosses that come in the box. And Stevie mentioned Ronaldo, and we all know he's been superb in the air throughout his career. But when you get as narrow as they got, you're in, inviting teams to go down the wide positions and whip balls in. Now, that's risky, you know, with, particularly with Ronaldo and Mandzukic on the side. And also, you know, you, you buy the Thomas Lamars of this world for big box, and he, he's holding hands with the left back. Yeah. 
I mean, if you're going to play that way, you might as well play somebody else in there. It, it, it beggars belief, and he's had plenty of praise, Diego Simeone, it beggars belief, and I know they've had success, but how negative this team can be, this squad can be with good players. Let's uh, bring Gab Marcotti into the conversation. Gab, can you just put into context how big a result this is for Juventus and Ronaldo tonight? I think it's absolutely huge uh, on, on, on so many different levels. Uh, there's obviously a financial level, which, which is very, very important. You know, Ronaldo was, is there to be the guy to put them over the top, uh, to help them grow uh, commercially to the level of, of a United uh, or a Real Madrid. That's, that's the goal where they can be sort of self-sustaining. And obviously going out in the round of 16, that really, really wouldn't have helped. But I think more broadly, um, it was really important also in terms of Max Allegri and the team as a whole. You know, Juventus had been really, really poor for the last six weeks. Uh, <clears throat> not just the Atletico game, uh, but in Serie A uh, against the likes of Bologna, against Napoli. You know, a lot of these games they won, but they played really badly. And you really saw no way back because what was fresh in your mind was, was the performance and the approach they took against Atletico Madrid. But... Uh, Allegri come under pressure. He had the courage to go and change things around, do things which nobody expected. Emre Sean uh, as a central defender playing Spinazzola down the left who, who I think was his first ever uh, Champions League start. Uh, using Bernardeschi the way he did. Crick said he was wonderful and he certainly was. And he did so many things which put them in a position where Ronaldo could then be the difference maker. You know, I, I think we have to look at Simeone as well here. Because it's one thing to know that you can defend, but it's another thing to actually start the game standing on the edge of your penalty box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing against a guy like Ronaldo, he doesn't need too much. The guy, the guy was born with greatness. Listen, we've all coached, mm -hmm. and and you can put players in a position, and you can you can try and help them with certain things. Some people are just born with greatness, and he's one of them. So to defend on the edge of your box against a player like that. Mm -hmm. You're taking a you're taking a huge gamble, and Chelsea only paid for it. And, and that was a, the troubling part for me for Atletico Madrid. When you think about the fact that early on in the game they were already parked on top of their 18-yard box, and so you're allowing a team that was already going to be on the front foot, Juventus, because they needed to be. You're essentially giving them 20 yards of space already onto your own half of the field, and so therefore inviting that pressure was never going to work for Atletico Madrid. The other thing that was disappointing is that whenever there was a moment for them to keep possession of the ball and relieve some pressure, they were in, incapable, incapable yeah. of doing that. They, they just simply could not put passes together. And so when you're looking for an outlet, you're under pressure and say, okay, Alvaro Morata, hold up the ball. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Not today, not tomorrow, not 10 years from now. Never going to happen. He's not that kind of player. Antoine Griezmann, come and hold the ball. Allow us to get out. Re let's, let's relieve some pressure so that then we can step our line out and we can get on the other half of the field. Never going to happen. They didn't get out of their own box in the warm-up. Nope. Right. <laughs> I mean, seriously. All right, this isn't Adelaide Home Madrid TV. We, Ronaldo has just got a hat-trick to see Juve through the quarter final. Two, really? Don't get red in the face. There's two I'm not getting red in the face. You keep bringing it all back to Atleti when it's surely the big story here is Ronaldo. Well, and we've talked about Ronaldo. There's two sides <laughs> to every story. <laughs> no, I understand that. The story that. was, and we laughed about it at the start of the game, we all said, oh, look at Atleti. Look how deep they're defending. Oh, they're the head and balls away again. Oh, they're the clear and balls away. And... Fine if you can do it for 90 minutes, but it's put, if you're going to talk about Max Allegri and Ronaldo, you've got to talk about Simeone and how poor that was as a setup. Mm. I mean, really, it was awful. That being said, if you want to talk about Ronaldo, right? We talked about it yesterday and last week and whatever. You know, oh, he hasn't scored too many in the Champions League. He's all about the knockout stages. Yeah. Go back and look at uh, uh, Real Madrid. It's about the knockout stages. He could, he can give up. He doesn't care about the group stages. It's an expected thing that the clubs he plays for goes through the group stages. And then he comes alive. Yeah. Why? One, because he's a great player. And two, because he absolutely loves it. He knows the tension. It's all going to be on him. Tomorrow, all the papers, back, pa yep. back, pa back, everywhere. back pages, front pages, everywhere. That's what the guy is all about. He delivers on the big occasion. Gab, we know what the conversation would have been if this didn't happen tonight. It would have been, was he worth the 100 million they spent in the summer? No matter what happens now, really, it's fair to say, even if they get knocked out in the quarterfinal stages by Porto, surely he's justified that price and what they've paid for him.
I wouldn't agree with that. I mean, I, I think he still has to write his own story. Uh, you know, beating Atletico, with all due respect, it's Atletico Madrid we're talking about here. Um, beating them over two legs when, when you get your rear end handed to you in the first leg, uh, you know, because of Cristiano Ronaldo, that doesn't justify the fee or it doesn't by itself justify the, the expense and the wages. Uh, you signed Ronaldo because you want much more from this. You want to win the Champions League uh, if either this year or, or next year. You want to grow. You want to be a big part of that. Uh, you know, simply getting to the quarterfinals with Ronaldo. You know, but the you manner in which they've done like, it. Without Ronaldo, yeah, they well, wouldn't be there sort of again. Is, the is, it, is it that simple? Well, hold on. Without Ronaldo, they wouldn't be there. Well, without Ronaldo, they got to... They got pretty far in recent years. You know, uh, playing against a team with Ronaldo, they're 3-0 up in the 90th minute uh, at the Bernabeu. So to make it seem as if, you know, well, there was no Juve, now Ronaldo's here, now they have it. No, this is how this is why he's there. I agree with you there, and this is this is he's, he's, this justifies this begins to justify the fee. But there is a lot more to come. There has to be a lot more to come from Juve, and they need to channel the sort of performance they had today and show this later on in the competition. And to me, that that's the biggest thing. Juve finally playing really well, really aggressively, as well as uh, as maybe almost anybody's played in Europe this season. And, and, and that's something that they can build on. They've shown that they can do that. Now build on it. Now go further. You, 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 need, a, you need to take a deep breath. Why? <laughs> you, you, you need to take a deep breath and have a rethink. <laughs> Why? You've just said if, uh, if Juventus go out to Porto in the next round, then he's justified his coming in. What, the, what, what <laughs> nonsense is that? <laughs> he's just been the reason they're through to the yes, quarterfinals. Yes, and he's been brought in not to take them to the quarterfinals, to win the damn competition. He's just got a hat trick against Athletic. Yes, and Without Gab, him, they wouldn't be there. And as Gab said, that's the first part of him uh, of, of the whole process. If, if they went out tonight, he'd be the first person you point at, yeah? You're he's, all, you're he's, all no, 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 no. Your only mistake is seeing Porto. No, no, no. He's, he's got money in the bank now, surely. Yeah, yes, but... but but, Not but it's only the first step and the, the first mistake. rung of the ladder and to get to where they want to get to. It's not going to justify it. It's a big help and it takes the pressure off in the time being. But he's not there to take UV to quarters and semi-finals. He's there to score hat-tricks on Champions League nights, which he's just done. done. Which he's done Which he's just done. But if they go out in the next round... Then surely it's a bigger picture. You can't just point the finger at him, which you could do easily tonight, can you? I don't know you? where you're going with this, son. My, no, what I'm uh, doing is, if he put in the performances he did in the Vicente Caderon tonight, yes. we'd all, all the knives would be out for Porto, him, yeah. if, he, if they go out to Porto, then you've not got a leg to stand on. I think get, he's still got go money in the bank now. If they go out to Barcelona, that's a different ball game. You well, expect that doesn't justify it. We're talking. We're talking about him having this greatness because it was against Atletico Madrid. Yeah. We're not going to be saying that if they go out against Porto. Ronaldo, if you're a supporter of this man as perhaps the greatest player in the history of this game, tonight is the sort of night that you use as an argument, that you use as a poster child. Tonight is the sort of night that you say, look, this, he does this while Messi does not. Mm. He does this while this guy doesn't do that. This is what he does at the best moments, at the most important moments. You know when the next most important moment is going to be? The next round of Champions League. And once they advance past that, the most important moment is the next round after that. So to say that whatever he's done now is enough and that's it, game over, I think it's a little short By the way, they ain't the other side of that that's fallen down flat on his face, they ain't going out to Porto even if they go. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, if that was to happen and they pull Porto and went out, there's none of those Juventus players could go back into Turin, not just Ronaldo. But listen... How have we turned this into a negative of, of Ronaldo? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, such a, it's been such a great night for them, whether you love Juventus or not, whether you love Ronaldo or not. You know, I didn't like Kayleigh and his antics as the game went on. The usual nonsense you see from players falling over these days. But there were some big performers in that Juventus side, not just Ronaldo. When they got off that bus tonight, don't, the, the crowd waiting for them at that stadium would not have been saying, hey, don't worry, lads, they'd have been in their face saying, you better get this job done. Ali, Ali said it earlier. It's great, but it's not a surprise, and, it, and it's really mm. true. Yeah. You know, this this guy is at such a level when it matters most mm. that to score a hat trick against arguably one of the best defensive teams in the world, and we're sitting going, are we really are we that surprised? That's how good this guy is, and that's how good this hat trick. See, when, is. when we're critical of Ronaldo, it's not of him as a player. 
and the talent that he has displayed mm. over the course of his career we're critical sometimes of the attitude that he portrays and the way that sometimes the perception is the way he would treat his players and show his, his teammates and all those things. But the talent itself yeah. and the player itself is, I mean, is among the best ever in the history of this game. That's special enough. The only thing I'm shocked at is we've not got a poll saying who's the greatest Messi or Ronaldo. Yeah, well, Where is it? That's coming. Get it up. Uh, because you it. can't have a conversation about the two without... <laughs> Where is it? Uh, so, for Diego Simeone, it's the first time he's ever lost... Oh, don't mention him. ...a knockout <laughs> stage. You told me not to mention him. I mentioned it to be able to play. That's it. That was just a little brief mention before we go back to Ronaldo. Show you what's contrary or what. Uh, Simeone, first time that he's been knocked out in knockout stage of the Champions League by a team that wasn't Real Madrid. Joker, seven goals to nil today. They will go through to the quarterfinals, 10-2 on aggregate. Uh oh, it's weird when games are like this because we can't really, we can't shout about them because there's not a lot to shout about really, is there? In the sense that City did the job, they were brilliant, but there's not much more to say, is there? Just took them apart then. Yeah, completely. Took them apart. Uh, I mean, the game was relatively close in Germany because what well, Otamendi gets sent off, there was a, a, a penalty against Fernandinho that, some argued about it was a handball as well. I think this might have been a game over two legs where VAR was used the most. Yeah, it was just incredible. But but it wasn't a spectacle. No. And, and it's hard to gauge City because Schalke have been poor this year in the Bundesliga. They're sitting in the bottom half of the Bundesliga, and they just were no match for for this multi-talented squad that you know people are saying you know only they can stop themselves really. You know what, they probably only scored seven because VAR took up so much time after every goal that it probably took ten minutes out of the game. So otherwise it could have been ten. Yeah. So I'm sure Schalke is saying, thank goodness for VAR. Uh, City of favourites, mm -hmm. nine to four. What's going to be their downfall? Why won't they win it? Themselves. I think they are their biggest rivals. In that first game against Schalke, what we saw is a lack of attention to detail and Schalke simply wasn't good enough to punish them over the course of 90 minutes. And so therefore, you have to imagine that if they had those same mistakes against better teams, that those teams would punish them and would see uh, Manchester City out of the competition, just like Liverpool did last year. So then the question becomes whether they have learned from that experience. And if they have, then, then Manchester City, rightfully so, one of the favorites in this competition. Look, as bad as Schalke were, it's impressive still what sure. Manchester City yeah. did. Uh, now, you can also make the argument that they would have gotten a whole, a, a bigger challenge from playing an interest squad, 11 v 11, on a training field than they would against this Schalke team. But Manchester City today, when they were asked a question, whatever question it was, they answered it 10 out of 10. It was an outstanding performance. Games will be a problem. You know, we're still in the FA Cup. We're going for the Premier League. Yeah, April's going to be bonkers for them. It's going to be huge. And, and of course, they're up against other teams from other countries who actually go out the way to help their teams, right. giving them rest. So see, see, the come they're they're the that. deepest squad, aren't they? Len, in that sense, that so that should help them out. Yeah, it will help, but, but we're, we're talking... I mean, well, everybody else has got, what, nine games left in the season? They could, have, they could have another seven or eight on top of that. That's a tough goal, even with a big squad. Go on, Gab. I was just going to say, they're deep to a point. I think in certain positions, I mean, we are splitting hairs here. You know, David Silva is showing signs of wear and tear. De Bruyne is injured. Fernandinho's injured. Uh, you know, Phil Foden came off the bench to, 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 to give David Silva a, a breather. But once you get past Foden, um, I don't know how much is there. And Foden's still a kid. So we are splitting hairs, but you could see how a certain injury crisis or, or something unexpected could possibly affect it. They nearly had that uh, at the back today when, when you saw who was playing center back. So those are things, those are things maybe the, 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 the few things that really are keeping uh, Pep Guardiola up at night a little bit worried. I think the Fernandinho injury uh, yeah. would be, you know, Kevin De Bruyne has had a, a mixed season because of injury. He's came back from injury and then probably come back too soon. Then he came back again. He didn't look his sharp self. Uh, they have other players in that position. As good as he is, they have other players that can come in and do a similar kind of job. They don't really have anybody that can do the Fernandinho job. They can plug, try and plug that hole, but when you, if you pull a Bassa or one of the real big boys in this competition, it's going to be invaluable to have his defensive cover. Sure. So he's, he's the big headache, I think, 
for uh, Guardiola. So, and I don't really know at the moment what is the update in his injury is. And they got to keep uh, Guero healthy as well. Correct. Because uh, Gabriel Jesus, he can do a job, but not the job. Yeah. So Sergio Guero, and he's prone to injury as well. So this is a guy that maybe needs some minutes off every, every now and then. We'll, of course, be looking back at both of those games on the next edition of the show. Please join us if you can. I mean, against the Liverpool tomorrow, goalless, of course, at Anfield. Who's going through, Stevie? Uh, I'm going to go for Liverpool. Uh, I think if Liverpool is shot, <laughs> I think if they're sensible defensively, yep. uh, and by that I mean don't sit on the edge of your box, so you're asking for trouble, but find a, find a good defensive posture, and then when you win the ball back, I think Liverpool's got the pace uh, to worry that Bayern uh, back line. So I think Liverpool can do it. I'm going to go for Liverpool. Well, they've got Van Dijk back, so that's yeah. that's a bonus. But the momentum's definitely swung. Bayern have played much better than they were early in the season. Liverpool have had a few struggles of late. Did lose in Naples, did lose in Belgrade, and lost in Paris. So they haven't travelled well this year in this competition. So I I'm going to go for Bayern Munich, just. I'm going to go with Bayern Munich as well. And I expect them to slow the game down so that Liverpool cannot take advantage of their speed. If this game is played at chaotic pace, that's where Liverpool thrives. I don't think that's what happens. Bayern Munich handles the pace of the game, they keep possession of the ball, they force Liverpool back, and then they win at home. Simple as that. If you go, Gav. Uh, I'm going to lean Bayern in this one. Uh, no Kimmich, no Muller, but I think experience uh, does matter. And I also think, in terms of Liverpool, I think there is a real psychological stigma there. It's not just this season they've lost away from home. Go back to last year, and if you count Kiev... It's, uh, and Rome, it's five straight uh, defeats away from Anfield. Meanwhile, at the camp now, Barca taking on Leon. Leon Barca, big favourites to go through. Remember, this was nil-nil in France. Uh, this should be fine, shouldn't it, for Valverde's side gap? It should be, but I don't think you take anything for granted. We've seen Leon put on performances before. Um, Depay, Fakir, they created all sorts of problems for City. Can possibly create problems for Barcelona as well. They did win in Manchester City in match day one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bill, I'm going for Barca. <laughs> <laughs> you can't not go for Barca. Even with Coutinho on the field, Barcelona overcomes wow. that. Wow. And they beat Leon. That would be a shock. Oh, that's that's a bit harsh. That's Leon. <laughs> well, Liverpool not, he hasn't been good. Liverpool oh, no, beating Bayern wouldn't be a shock. No. But I think Leon beating Barca at home yeah. would, would be a shock. Oh, a draw. School draw, of course, be enough to see them through. Right, it could mean no La Liga teams in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. They've had a great record of late, haven't they? But of course, even on my bikes like this, who's out? Real Madrid, Atleti are out. And the fourth one was Valencia, all gone. Are you sure you got that right? I think so. Oh, Sevilla. Sevilla, there you go. <laughs> Elsewhere, actually in France today. I mean, seriously. Apparently, Zidane won La Liga with Real Madrid. Who knew? Oh, who knew? <laughs> hey, and you were right about Valencia, though. I, well, yeah, but then I went to Sevilla. Uh, this has been a bad, Well, bad you didn't La believe Liga in yourself. Today, so. You didn't believe That's in it. yourself. You're a little flustered. That's People got true. to you. Flustered today. Yeah. Apparently, right. you're not allowed to have a bad memory. No, apparently not. It's apparently not. not. You're allowed to have bad genes. And you were looking at him for confirmation. I know. <laughs> no, no, I, I simply <laughs> asked a question <laughs> to create some doubt, and you're like, ah, I got of course. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you look at me, if don't look at me, I'm just going to look away. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> me and him. I don't know. We've got five seconds left, Stephen. Anything you'd like to say to he's Philip? He's very angry today. He's very, very angry. angry. <laughs> All fear, he's been angry. Uh, I should have mentioned Hello Porto. On the TV. Right, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Until then, goodbye. Welcome into Extra Time, a very special day. It's our producer Pete's birthday. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, now, does anybody actually know his age? Or has he told anybody or are we guessing? I don't know, actually. This isn't quite fun for people who's watching, yeah, guessing the age of someone they've never met. Uh, yeah. You don't want to meet him. That's oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to meet him. Right? Apparently, you know, there's a good chance if you, you see a guy, somebody walking down the street with bandages around him, hobbling along with like, a, boot. a boot on his foot. Yeah, because he's lumping. He, has he, a, he had a king once. He had a king. Yeah. Ask him for sympathy. He has a, a reputation as being a bit of a hypochondriac. He's 44. What? 44, <laughs> apparently. He, my God. He, he's 44. He must have had some life when he was young. <laughs> what did they have him doing? <laughs> Carrying bags of coal around when he was four. <laughs> OK, right. <laughs> that was a tough upbringing. I'll tell you what, I feel better now. Uh, let's go to the crux oh, oh, of it. Uh, Craig obviously said that you may have been going to go through yesterday. 
Uh, you guys got listened to Craig Moore, knew that Ronaldo was going to dominate against Atleti. Well, I agree. I agree. Listen to him more. He my life. He's a psychic. You, you're the man, Mr. Oh, Burley. yes, he's the man. Uh, and the next one continues. Oh, he, meant, he, meant, he meant psycho. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't mean psychic. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. Uh, uh, Del, uh, how hard is it going to be to get Dan's foot out of his mouth after he predicted that this match was going to be so boring? It wasn't boring, was it? Juve were good. How um, do Madrid feel about Ronaldo right now? Zidane must be like, I told you so. Who's Zidane talking to? Hmm? Who's Zidane talking to? Perez, maybe? Oh my God. Yeah. Just ask you a question. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you might know. What did he say? He said, what did he say? I'm going to be leaving, but I'm going to give you a bit of advice. Keep one of the best players in the world. <laughs> yes. He knows his stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, out there. Yeah. Where does tonight's Champions League performance for Ronaldo rank in his career, Gab? Wow, well, he had a bunch. I mean, I remember, I think it was his second or third year, uh, they played Bayern in the uh, quarterfinal, I want to say. They won 2-1, um, and then they went to penalties. Uh, he was outstanding that night. Uh, you also obviously remember, more recently, at the World Cup, the opening game against uh, against uh, Spain was that dramatic uh, free kick. Possibly the oh the Wolfsburg game. You, you know what? I was thinking about this before. I'm like, where have I seen this before? Uh, the Wolfsburg quarterfinals, Champions League 2015-16. Uh, Zidane's first season in charge, or first half season in charge. They lose the first leg two 0 They're home at the Bernabeu. I think he scored two goals in the space of like two minutes or something. And then he scored a free kick to win it from time. So, you know, he had three goals that night and uh, came back from 2-0 down the first leg. Easy peasy. Done this how about, before. How about the reason as to why he's in Juventus? The bicycle kick goal against Juventus. Yeah. In Juventus, Juventus, where the fans essentially said, okay, well, we give up. Either we bring them or we're not going to win. Stevie, what are your thoughts on Ronaldo doing Simeone's celebration? Did he? Yes, he did. Yes, yes. What did he say? <laughs> what? What? What is that? <laughs> What's up? Uh, what did you make of it? I don't mind it, you know. No? No. Listen, if somebody does something yeah. and basically is doing it to you and the rest of your teammates, yeah. and it goes wrong in the second game, I think you've got every right to Rubbing. do exactly the same thing. Yes. Gab? Do you know who else feels that way, Stevie? Is Simeone himself. He was asked about it after the game, and uh, he basically said he had every right to do it. He showed, you know, he has them too. He showed that he has more, he had more of them tonight. And uh, he's got the right attitude and professionalism, and, and I respect that. So. Simeone's not bothered. I'm not sure anybody else should be. HR at the door. Maybe they're bothered. So let's move on <laughs> quickly, shall we? Uh, is they're coming after Steve. <laughs> it's Cristiano, the best Champions League player of all time. No idea. Hmm. I, I, can't, I can't remember. Top goal scorer. Uh huh. Put it this way. Let's make it easier. Is there anybody ahead of him in any category? No. What? Does your trophies won. Yeah. Goal scorer. Like Messi's won four. He's won five. Uh -huh. Right. He's, what, he's scored more goals than Messi. Uh -huh. So that would be a yes. Yeah. Has to be. I think so. Yeah. yeah. No. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Should Griezmann have gone to Barca in the summer, Ali? Uh, <laughs> well, he wishes he had. He was anonymous. Though. No, and that, and, and see, and that's part of the problem, is that there are moments in which you need to be the guy. And when they were under pressure, and there were moments in which maybe you get an opportunity to get the team forward because you can hold on to the ball, there was no participation from Griezmann whatsoever today. Now, Atletico Madrid didn't play well at all, but he didn't even play. Yeah. He wasn't even out there. And Morata's renaissance is over. Huh? <laughs> well, he did, start, he did get Juventus off to a flying start. Yeah. With a little uh, giveaway, which sent, I think it was Bernadeschi away. Mm -hmm. And then just going from the cross. So, yeah. Is it disrespectful for City to score seven goals when they didn't even need to score one to make it through to the next round? Are you kidding me? No. Are you kidding me? It's disrespectful to take the mickey out of the opposition. Correct. Listen, if I'm, if I'm playing for Schalke, I'd rather get beat 10-0 no, 
than 1 0 and have them show Bolton for, for 60 or 70 minutes. So, absolutely. Every mm -hmm. time beat them 1 0 and then leave yourself open to maybe them getting a couple on the, yep. on the counter out of nothing. Professional sports. This is not under 11. They probably needed a bit more than that with the away goal. This is not juice boxes and orange slices. No. no. This is professional. It is. That's it. Just like this show. Which well, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> this is more juice boxes uh, than we'll orange slices. We'll be looking back at <laughs> Bayern against Liverpool plus of course Ooh, Barca against Lyon. Uh, are you here tonight? I am. Is he watching the I game? Am not. The question no. is, is he watching he the game in the green room with us or is he watching it? It depends. At his own desk. It depends.